The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Quirky Dog Podcast, inspired by some of the quirkiest dogs you can ever imagine and the owners who love them. This podcast is brought to you by the quirky couple themselves, Scott and Jess Williams. Their aim is to educate and entertain. Here's Scott and Jess. Welcome, guys, and happy Wednesday. We are coming to you from Salem, New Hampshire, and today we have a very special guest on. We are inviting on Alex Butler from across the pond. She is with Enigma Canine. But first, we're going to start with the quirky tip of the day. All right. My quirky tip of the day is if you guys have a Facebook account, follow her account. It's Alexandra Butler, and um, she does some awesome stuff. She's really involved with tricks and scent work. She has some really cool dogs. And most recently, she's kind of come up with this copy method, and it's just totally taken off. So, Alex, thank you so much for joining us here today. And um, tell us a little about, about what the heck you do and how this copy method came to be, if you don't mind. Lovely. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> So, so yeah, so I've kind of always been into dogs. Um, I started doing, um, probably getting into the dog training in about 2007, doing operational scent work. Um, and then it's just been kind of the last kind of three years that I've been doing trick stuff. Um, and the, the copy method has just kind of come about in the last, say, I know, only the last couple of months, to yeah. be honest. And it's a, by a complete accident that it's come about <laughs> as well. Uh, it's one of those things that just kind of happens. You're like, the dog does something. You're like, what on earth was that? Yeah. Um, and it's just kind of, it's been so interesting that I, I've just kind of, just kind of run with it. And it's just developed into this phenomenal thing that the dog's doing. Yeah, it's amazing. So the muzzle video was the one that really took off mm -hmm. like gangbusters, right? So basically, I think it was you and your Malinois. Was that the breed? And yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, so yeah. you're like putting a muzzle on your face, and then I think yeah. it was even the same muzzle you were then like kind of showing to him or her and seeing if the dog would do the same thing you were doing, correct? Um, so I had two muzzles. Okay, so two, I had muzzles, one muzzle two muzzles. Two muzzles. Okay. And then one muzzle for him. Okay. So yeah, so I was basically asked, uh, showing him what I wanted him to do. Yeah. Um, and then just shaping it from there. So he would kind of watch me and approximate towards it yeah um and then anytime he kind of approximated towards it he would then get rewarded for it and then just built on it from there yeah and was that like one of your first training sessions the video that you put up online of it um that was about the fourth one that I okay. did so I started it kind of happened by accident to start with I was actually training uh, I was actually videoing for um one of my obedience um videos for my obedience hub um and I was just kind of showing what my, where your leg would go and I looked down and he was just copying me and what I was doing in this really weird way and I was like oh <laughs> and so I started to do a few other things um and then to start to do a few things that were more complicated which was one of the muzzle um things because he's never had a muzzle on before yeah um and I've obviously trained muzzle for dogs in an, in the, tr the traditional way. Yeah. Um, but this just took 16 minutes yeah. for him to get to that end point just by copying what I was doing. Yeah, it's it's truly amazing. I mean, you saw the video, and it's unlike anything we've ever seen, really, in the dog world. I haven't seen the muzzle video. I saw the pull my finger video. <laughs> he liked that one most. I showed him the muzzle one. He just only remembers pull my finger now. Well, I had seen that before you even uh, brought... Uh, Alex up. Yeah, I had yeah, seen yeah. it online yeah, and yeah, I, was, yeah. I thought it was funny. Yeah. And then you said, you're telling me about this. And I said, oh, is that the pull my finger? <laughs> and she thought I was making fun of something else. He's like very, he's everything very... is around gaff farts. <laughs> I said, no, no, she's really doing it with the, with the finger. <laughs> he's very into the pull my finger part. But then there were like the stacking of the blocks. I saw that one, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, yes. have you tried it with any other behaviors? Um, so what else have we done? So some of the like the really simple things like crossing over paws, yes. like that, um, like you, the, the the traditional things and turning around. Um, what else have we done? Um, oh my god! Do you know what? After I should have gone back through my um, social media <laughs> and the pull my finger bit was the. Well, I do you know what? I'm a kid at heart as well. So, <laughs> so <is> he. <laughs> <laughs> he loved it. He's like, oh my god, this is great. We're teaching all the dogs this one. <laughs> Well, for the for the thumbnail for the video, I'm going to have Jess yeah. biting, biting on my finger. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, he, he can't get over that part of it. But I want to kind of talk about the process a little bit. And we touched on this a little bit when we were chatting yeah. before we recorded live. But 
it really brings like training very um, kind of methodically and it makes mm. trainers very present. So kind of just touch on that a little bit because you're not, you're not as frantic. You can't be frantic when you're doing this and no. you really, it really seems to be a thoughtful training method. And I love the way that it kind of slows down the pace. So tell us a little bit about what that's like from your perspective. So, yeah, so from, from training trips, you kind of lure the dog into a lot of things and, and it can kind of be quite quick and, and the dog kind of gets a bit, especially Malinois, they can get quite frantic and quite, um, they can make quite a lot of errors in what they're doing before you can get to what you want. Um, this method, it does, it, it slows everything down. It slows the dog down as well. Um, and it also slows you down and the patience that's needed. The first, it does get quicker. Once a dog starts to learn that you're that they have to copy you it does kind of get a little bit quicker the first one I was trying with with a completely new behavior took me about an hour and a half of just sat there and and doing it and you've got to be really clear in what you're doing as well so it starts to change how you're handling and how you're asking the dog to do things because you've got to be so crystal clear in what you're doing for the dog to see yeah. And then to try and copy it as well. Um, and and it does. It makes you then watch what the dog's doing to see how what they're copying as well. It might be that your arm was too high up. So then you've got to bring the arm down. And, and it, it almost connects you together with the dog a bit more. Yeah. No, I see that. And it's interesting, too, because when your dog doesn't necessarily copy the way you want him or her to, then you are a little bit more intentional with your movement. Like you're slower, you're yes. more deliberate, like, no, this and then this yeah. and the whole thing. So I, I just love that part of it, that it's almost like a mindfulness practice when training. And yes. obviously most good dog training has some level of mindfulness to it or not, but you do just have to be so careful of the specifics of how you do it. And it's a brand new thing. I mean, people aren't out there doing this from what I've seen before. I think that's why it's taken off internationally the way it has. Yeah. And it's bizarre because mimicking is quite normal in the animal kingdom i think we do animals do mimic each other and we seem to have forgotten that in dog training yeah we seem to think that we have to kind of move the dog ourselves into those positions which potentially the dog's not ready for because the muscles might not be ready or the motor skills might not be ready for it yeah but for the dog to actually think for itself and to put themselves into those positions they're kind of developing all those things themselves um without us without relying on leaning on us or Um, Because a lot of times if I'm teaching like a beg or to stand on the hind legs and they're kind of resting on my hand to start with to build things up. Um, But in this, they're kind of building up themselves and developing those motor skills without my support or physical support. They're kind of just doing it themselves. And um, I've forgotten where the question was. (laughs) No, I just think, well, just kind of that it's your, it's your own thing. Like you've originated this whole thing. You know what I mean? And that's, Mm. it's really fascinating. I think that people, it it is, you say, you talk about mimicking with animals and it's so common. You see a dog play ball, another dog will play ball, but we so infrequently think that dogs can mimic us. And just the way that, you know, you've, transferred this to some other behaviors and Mm. I'm sure people now at home are trying the same thing I know I'm going to definitely try with my dog and stuff but it's just such a new area for us to explore in animal training with dogs actually mimicking humans because people just like you said aren't really thinking on that plane so I mean thank you for bringing light to that because I just think it's a whole new area for us to see and explore and everything it's awesome you know I I wanted to add Mm. that I think uh, I think it's quite interesting Go, 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 go. You get the, you get the floor. <laughs> I think it's quite interesting, the process in getting them into that copier mode as well. Um, because they're not going to, I think because of the way we train the dogs anyway from when they're pups or when, when we put that training in, they're kind of relying on us to move them into those positions or to, to move them around to where we want them. So to actually get them into the mindset of, I want you to copy me, um, that's a really interesting process. So I've just started, I've been doing everything with a kiosk to start with. Um, and I've just started working with one of my other dogs to kind of go through that process just to see whether he's just one of a kind <laughs> or whether it's something that a- any dog can do. Um, and it's really interesting. The other dog is doing, going through exactly the same process um, in, in the way he's learning to copy me so I can start to put new new behaviors he doesn't know now into that copy process as well. Yeah, it's it's more of like a teamwork situation than, like you said, the dog yes. looking to you for answers. What were you going to say, Sweetie? Well, I just uh, we see children, uh, dogs copying children all the time out in the yard. Mm. And the kids know it. The kids are activating the dog by running back and forth. Now the dog is running back and forth. Next thing you know, the parents are yelling, stop running around because it's getting too hectic, you know. <laughs> 
but really yeah. they're, 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 the dogs are just following the kids' behavior. You know, mm. the kids are, if the kids were all sitting around having a tea party, the dog wouldn't be running around and, you know, nipping yeah. at their butt, you know? Yeah. But it is an interesting thing. It's, and also one thing I'm thinking when you're talking is that a lot of dogs have a very short attention span. They're not mm. accustomed to having to focus and then really just really continue to try and problem solve and, and participate. And uh, that's one thing that you're building there. I mean, you have working, you're talking about Malinois, they're working dogs, they're, they're motivated. And once they are in that learning mindset, they know that this is a game that we're gonna play together. But um, some of these, uh, quite a few of these, I think companion animals need to learn how to just be calm and focus that we're yeah. doing something because they're kind of anxious. They they can't. As soon as they get a, their frustration level is very low. Yeah. So they just kind of bail out really early with certain things, you know. So it's something that yeah. It's a great little exercise to build some focus and help the dog work through a little bit of frustration. You don't want it to get to the point where they check out and don't want to participate, but they need to learn to hang in there a little bit more. And that's the, you know, with shape just with shaping. I mean, that's the same type of thing, you know, because if your timing isn't good and if you're not rewarding these micro successes, yeah. the dog's like, I don't know what the hell you want. I'm, I'm done with this, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. If the handler or the dog has any ADHD, this is something good to like focus on a little bit yeah. and like, hey, let's try to be present and let's work through a behavior. And it doesn't all have to be in one session. Like when you're yeah. talking about some of these duration things, like certain breeds and certain trainers may have to break it down. But if you and your dog can be in it for the long haul, it's not super physically taxing. It's not blowing them up mentally and like, oh my gosh, yeah. I've never seen anything like this. And the progress is just amazing. Like, I mean, the way that mm. you're just able to work through something is just truly amazing. So yeah. we're, we're I hooked. I want to add that, you know, my dog used to have incredible incredible focus but then through working with me now he's ADHD now he <laughs> he copied he copied that right. he copied that yeah all right we're gonna go to break super quick and when we get back we're gonna talk about more of what Alex does and how some of you guys even from the states can potentially work with her want to keep up with all the latest from the quirky dog podcast like me and Murphy here then make sure you head on over to the YouTube channel and subscribe or if you prefer to listen to the madness go on over to iTunes or Spotify and follow the quirky dog podcast and hey, while you're there, leave a rating and review and let them know what you think of the show. Until then, keep it quirky. Okay, we are back with Alex Butler from England. And um, before we started recording, we were talking, and you have Labs, Beaucerons, and Malinois, correct? Those are the three breeds? Yes. Okay. And uh, your kind of your focus has been before this copy method has become this like international sensation, mostly scent work and tricks in certain in various aspects, correct? So can you just yes, kind of yeah. talk about some of your experience there and how you're involved in those things and what that looks like outside of what people are seeing with just muzzles and blocks right now? Yeah, so I started, the, the very first thing with scent work was operational work. So I had, um, I still, she's 15 years old now, bless her, my, uh, my first trailing dog. And, um, and we worked alongside the police and she'd be going out. And um, as I kind of progressed through, I kind of, she was really reactive. This was one of the big parts. She was really, she's a Malamar cross shepherd. So um, she was really reactive to people, even though she was a missing person dog, um, to people and dogs. But I saw how scent work was really helping her with her reactivity. Um, and when she was working, literally, she would just work through anything at all. And she was just chilled for a Mali as well. It was my first Malinois. Um, and scent work just really, really chilled her out. And it got me thinking that this could be brought into the pet dog world as well. Um, so then I started doing some pet dog classes like a few years later on. Um, and... And it really, it really does help. Scent work will re and tricks will really help towards behavioural problems. So it's not just kind of something that someone can do as an extra or fun or to enter trials. Um, it can really help with bond building with your dog, um, anxiousness, nervousness, reactivity, so many issues that these things can help with. Um, and it's just been so nice to see so many people who have had trouble with their dog to then come and do something which isn't your traditional reactivity training, um, have fun with their dog, and then see that, um, kind of see the dog blossom from there. Yeah, that's um, awesome. And, and it just kind of grew from that bit then. Yeah, so you're doing in-person um, classes with scent work and tricks right now on like a pet dog level or all different levels? 
Um, pet dog level or sports level, um, but if anyone wanted operational level, then obviously with my experience, I can take them through that as well. But mainly it's towards the, um, the pet dog and the sport world. Cool. And um, what about online? Because we had talked about this a little bit before that you have some online offerings. So talk to people a little bit about some different ways that they could work with you if they don't have access to you and they're not in England. <laughs> Yes. Um, so I've got basically everything that I do is online as well. So the courses that I offer in person are all online as um, video courses. So they're on demand. Um, you can log into them. There's there's memberships that you can join. You can join the, just the course and kind of do that by yourself. And that's with trailing, scent detection, tracking and tricks. Um or you can join the membership where you get like extra problem solving videos and you can upload your videos for feedback. So it becomes like a community that you can join. Um, and with the trick training, I started Talent Dogs UK back in only in October last year because um, I wanted to put something more in for the tricks. So it was mainly aimed around doing um, trials and kind of mixing obedience in with the, with that. So you can, you can, Teach your dog tricks, but with an end result as well to kind of go and do trials and get some rosettes. Because everyone loves rosettes. Yeah. Everyone loves to get a rosette. <laughs> yeah. um, so it was kind of a way to, to have some goals with that trick training. Because sometimes trick training, is there's nothing else to do afterwards. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of to bring a new sport in. So um, that's also, so that's our trick training side, which is online, is our talent dogs. And we've got online trials that we do, online tests online events as well so anyone from anywhere can come and join in cool um with the copy method what i have decided to do because it's just blown my mind with how how much it builds a bond with the dog um it's actually once i've got it all sorted and it's all videoed out it's actually gonna go on free on my youtube channel okay um so anyone you don't need to pay to um watch the videos and learn how to do it with your dog you can just get it for free on the youtube channel just by subscribing to the youtube that's awesome. Thank you so much. And that's the Enigma Canine YouTube channel? It is, yes. Okay, yeah. Okay. good. You got a lot going on here. We'll put all descriptions and URLs and socials in the episode description link so people understand. But no, I, I think it's really cool to combine like, you know, these tricks and maybe even in some ways there can be some scent work copy methods like down the road the way you do it. But just to yeah. combine these things into this like novel thing because the world hasn't really seen this type of mimicking before. And it was just, it took off because it is so interesting mm -hmm. and the progress just was so vast. I mean, it's just amazing. So the fact that you're offering that for free to people is really awesome. I appreciate it. It's really cool. Yeah. I think if I tried the pull my finger method with my mouth, <laughs> here we go back to it. <laughs> I think he would take my finger right off. He's, he's already had, the, he's already had bite work training. I can't so. wait to see the videos. <laughs> <laughs> I, got we'll, four, I got three fingers left. Let's we'll try send it you the medical bills. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe we alluded to before the break. Um, so you do like some sort of a handstand with your dogs. Was that what you were saying with like balancing in your hand? Were you mentioning something like that? Oh, the, the, what, the last video that I put up with him um, balancing on top of it. Oh, that one too. Yeah. So that's like an angel balance. So that's, <laughs> that, that, that you're very brave to do that. I don't think I'd be doing that with Scott's, with Scott's mouth, but it, it would be super interesting too, to see um, some of these more advanced tricks, like be mm. able to like be moved with the copy method. And I really feel like the world's or the sky's the limit with people with what they want to try it with. Because once the dog kind of understands to look at you yeah. in this like more hypercritical way, and you understand how to communicate in this way, and you're kind of in this like zen state together I think you can truly like expand it anywhere and you can play with it however yeah. you want so I, I'm super excited about it so how long do you think it'll take for the copy method stuff to kind of be up and about on your YouTube where are you at with the level of training that you desire to share with the world so far um I'm reckoning probably only about I don't know six to eight weeks until it is all there completely okay great so great so quite soon good good awesome that's awesome for people and then beyond that um you have a TikTok channel that went it went viral on TikTok right that's Enigma Canine yeah. also uh yeah yes it is yeah yeah it is okay yeah. okay sure great I remember then yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to circle back your talent dog UK you can actually get <laughs> online certifications for tricks for that as well right like if you're doing it virtually yes, yes, you don't you have to be in person okay yeah because everybody loves titles and loading them up and everything yeah. and you're right with tricks so many so often people you know take a tricks course they love training it at home and then that's kind of it like you know what are you gonna yeah. have your friend over and show them everything you do at coffee <laughs> so people do like to achieve that kind of level are there different levels of achievement and like qualifications for that program or how does that work 
Yes, yeah, so there's tw- at the moment there's 12 levels that wow. I've got, and each level has six tricks in it. Okay, great. Um, so you can take, after each level, you can take a test at the end, and then obviously there's a rosette and a certificate at the end of each <laughs> one. And that's just, um, it's just a routine, the same routine for every, um, that everyone would do, but the trials are slightly different. Um, and if you're online, then all I ask is that either we do it over Zoom or we just get a recording of you doing those tricks, as long as I can see that the dog understands them and you're both working together then you can get that title but there's 12 at the moment and they get they get progressively harder as they go yeah i would assume so well that's a lot of tricks i'm excited maybe i'm gonna have to do a little talent dog uk (laughs) you know which one i want to start oh my god if you say pull my finger one more time yeah (laughs) he's he's he's, he gets very fixated i I tell him he has a tick (laughs) alex i have a dog question for you okay so i used to work i worked uh quite a few beaucerons in protection work about 25, 20, 25 years ago in the States, but I was working at a, at a field, a trial field, where the owner was a Beauceron breeder, and she would import Beaucerons, and they were more difficult than Malinois on, on several levels. And I wonder, in doing this copy method, <clears throat> did you find the Beaucerons to be a little more forgetful than the, than the Malinois, yeah. or do they... <laughs> Yeah, that was one of the interesting things about them. I mean, they're awesome. Uh, yeah, uh, but they were they're very airheads. Yes, that, that's kind of what I was going for. Yeah, they, yeah. sometimes it's they like, oh, let's do it over heads. again. Yeah, yeah, interesting, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, you'll teach them something one day, and the next day they're like, what? Yeah, okay. yeah. What, what are we doing today? Yeah, but yeah. The, it's important for people to see the difference in the breed varieties, though, and still working yeah. through it. And it's interesting, Scott asked that question because I wanted to close here with you have labs, Beaucerons, and Mals. So, I mean, that's like Mals and Beaucerons kind of are more in the same category here, but like labs are total outliers. So, just explain to us a little bit from your perspective. Um, you don't have to do like strengths and weaknesses, but just compare those three, if you will, just um, kind of from where you're coming from. And obviously the genetics you get are going to be different than what other people get. But just yeah. in general, what do you see just some variations or similarities between those three? Because it's, it's, it's oddball stuff. Like a lot of people have mouths and border collies or, you know, shepherds and mouths, yeah. but you're like a Beaucerons, mouths and labs. Like it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they are different. Yeah. Uh, Malinois have my heart. They, they are my favorite breed. Um, that's why I've got more of them than the others. Um, but I think the labs tend to do a lot more of the scent work than the tricks because that that's kind of what they're, they're all work in line, all of my dogs anyway. Um, and that's kind of what they're geared towards. Um, but it doesn't mean they can't do that stuff. They're, they're the tricks and things. They're just, they are a little bit more, it's slower with them. Yeah. It's a lot. So the, the Malinois, they, they've, they're, they just want to keep going and yeah. going. So you can do that hour and a half session. Right. The, the Labradors, they're like, yeah, I've kind of done this a few <laughs> let's, times. Let's go we'll, sniff we'll for food. Let's go sniff for food yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of go off and do some searching instead. And I'm like, no, we're not doing that. We're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's a, it is a slower process, with the, especially with the Labradors, a lot slower. Um, and the Bose ones are just airheaded. They're just completely airheaded. <laughs> they have to um, have some strengths too, or you wouldn't want to keep getting them. Um, so yeah, what, yeah, <laughs> what, what do we love about the Bose runs? We, we got you the know, airheaded thing out. Do you know what the Bose ones, do you know, they're, they're, they seem to be quite more agile with things. Okay. And they seem to build the core muscles or build any kind of muscles a lot quicker than the Malinois do. Interesting. They tend to do that over time. And then they've got a really good core for different things or stability. The Boserons seem to get a really good core muscle or they build the muscles up for the tricks a lot quicker One than the, the, I was gonna say, the Malinois do. I maybe the Boseron builds up those muscles because you have to keep repeating the same <laughs> exercise over and over. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Yeah, because they say, oh, I don't think they forget it. I think they're just like, I actually want a few more treats. <laughs> No, it's interesting. And it, it, they're just three distinct breeds. So do you do detection and tricks with all three? Like all yes. three? Of, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. so you... Whatever any of them want to do, I basically do with them. So some of them don't particularly like detection that much, but really like tracking and tricks. They kind of, I, I try everything with all of them work out what they like, and then just run with that. Yeah, they all have different strengths. That's super interesting. Mm. All right, is there anything else that we missed as far as the copy method goes or Enigma Canine or your Talent Dogs UK or you got a lot going on? Is there anything else um, that you missed or you want to share with listeners and viewers? 
Do you know what? I could probably carry on talking for about three hours. So that's dangerous. <laughs> well, it, it's later. Questions. It's later there too. So I worry about it. No, I, I just, I'm really grateful. And I didn't even know that you were putting this on YouTube for free. So I'm glad that we got that out there. So we want you guys to subscribe to Enigma Canine uh, through YouTube and then also follow Alexandra Butler um, on Facebook. And um, you have a lot of great videos out. And I've enjoyed your content even before this copy method came out. Like you're just pretty level-headed oh, with the you. way that you talk dogs and everything. And, and you're, you, you just kind of join the dog world, I think, more than divide it. So thank you for just for being oh, a big light you. out there because it's it's important these days. We need to come together. We need to root for each other. It's, yeah. it's tough out there. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> well, I will say in closing, in defense of the Beauceron. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I, have, I, I have seen some and worked some excellent Beaucerons in the United States, but that airhead description is kind of typical of what you tend to see where it's like, new day and it's like oh what are we doing today it's same thing we did yesterday yeah. let's let's try and get you going again here. yeah okay. and we recently recorded um an episode about dogs that weren't good with kids and mals and both surrounds both went on those for they're not so they're not for just the faint of heart and anyone they're for good good dog trainers and good good dog people good dog ring people that know what they're doing all right well i'm gonna make sure that scott does the pull my finger trick with his dog and we'll take some video and i'm gonna try the muzzle i'll get two baskervilles and i'm gonna mess with it because we're supporting it and we're gonna try it on our end but thank Thank you for showing the world the copy Thank method. You. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast here today. And you guys, please, we want you to check out Alexander Butler from Enigma Canine and definitely check out that free YouTube series. I can't even believe you're not offering it at a price. Thank you so much for sharing it with the world. Thank you. All right. Have Good a great, have a great week, you. guys. Have a great Wednesday. And in the meantime, keep it quirky. <laughs> The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.